Okay, so this could be our first problem uh, working conjugate B. Uh, this particular problem wants you to find the slope and displacement at B, which is the free end. Uh, we also have a value for E, which is pretty close to steel, and a, uh, an I value, moment of inertia, of 800 inches to the fourth. So if we do conjugate beam, what's, what's the first step that we need to do? Yeah, so let's find the, uh, draw the moment diagram for this thing. So to help me out here, um, let me go ahead and assume over here that I have a positive shear at A and a positive bending moment at A. And I'm, I'm going to find those values. So how do I find the moment at A? Probably some moments at A, right? So let's do that. So using right-hand rule and summing moments at A, making sure I have equilibrium, I look at the free body diagram and I have this moment, which with my sign convention is negative. I have the moment of this five kip force, which is also negative, and it has a moment arm of 15 feet. So it looks like my moment at A is negative 75 kip feet. Everybody see that? And then if I sum forces in the Y direction, assuming up for my sign convention as being positive, I have my shear A acting up minus the 15 kip force acting down, so it looks like the shear at A is positive 15 kips. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Or I could just put a one there. Oh, yeah, I'll put a little wiggly line there. Okay, so with that, I should be able to come over here and sketch the shear force and bending moment diagram. So we'll do shear quickly. So there's my positive shear. All, all these will have units of kips. So I'm going to start off with a shear of 5, right? There's no load, so there's no change. The load is 0, so I have a 0 slope. So it looks like I have a shear diagram. It looks like that. And then I'll draw my moment diagram. We'll assume all these have units of kip feet. And from our work up here, we're going to start off with a moment of negative 75 kip feet. And you can see I've got a positive area in my shear diagram of 15 times 5, which is positive 75, which brings me to 0. And then I have a constant positive slope. So there's my moment diagram. A couple weeks ago, this is, all, this is where you would stop. And you'd be very happy that you've had this very simple problem. But now we need to do the conjugate beam, right? So what would our conjugate beam look like? Well, let's draw it right underneath here. So here's what the conjugate beam will look like. So um, our fixed connection will become free, and our free end will become fixed. So I'll just draw a structure that looks kind of like, like that. So there's the fixed end. <coughs> and now I'm going to apply this moment as load on my conjugate beam. Now what I like to do is just take my moment diagram and just put it right on the beam. So in our case, starting from the center and projecting down, that's what it looks like. And remember, we load the conjugate beam with the moment divided by EI. <coughs> now this is negative moment. So which direction is negative load, up or down? down? Down. So our structure 
looks like that. And just to remind you that this was 15 feet and this was 15 feet. So now we've converted our original problem into a conjugate beam problem and all I have to do here is do what? Well, the problem originally asked for the slope and displacement at B, that's here. So slope in the real beam is what in the conjugate beam? Shear. And what is positive shear at B? It is down. So if I solve for that, that will give me the slope at B. Now the displacement at B in the real beam is what in the conjugate beam? It is moment. So I'm going to assume positive moment at B. So all I have to do is find these two values. So what is this? This is just find the reactions of the conjugate beam in this particular problem. That's not so bad, is it? So let's do that. Uh, to make things a little easier for myself, I'm going to come over here and turn this into a concentrated equivalent force. It's a triangle, so it's going to be one half the base, which is 15 feet, times the height, which is 75 kip feet divided by EI. Um, that is not an easy number for me to calculate in my head. What is that? 75 times 15 divided by 2. 5, 6, 2, 1, 5. 55.6. 562.5? 562.5? And that will be kip feet squared divided by EI. Okay? Now, probably I'm going to need to know the distance of that force from here to the fixed connection. Um, I know up to this point it's 15 feet. What's the distance from here to the centroid? That's two-thirds the distance, right? So two-thirds of 15 is 10. So I'll get an additional 10 feet. So I think I have all my, um, my free body diagram drawn well enough that I can just solve for the reactions. So let's start with uh, the moment. So I'll come up here and I'll sum moments about B and make sure that the conjugate beam is in equilibrium. So looking at B, uh, with my sign convention, moment B is positive. And then this force over here, created by the moment applied on the conjugate beam, also is Positive. So the force is going to be 562.5 kip feet squared. And we're still dragging around our EI value. And then times the moment arm, which we just computed, is uh, 25 feet. So therefore, the moment at B is negative, and whatever that times 25 is. Fourteen thousand and sixty-two point five. Is it really? Mm -hmm. I just guessed. Fourteen thousand sixty-two point five, and that's kip feet cubed over ei. Now let's let's look at it first in terms of the sine conditions. Does it make sense that it's negative? Remember. This maps directly into what? The displacement at B in the real beam. So do you expect negative displacement at B in the real beam? Yeah. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approximate the displacement to look something like that. So yeah, we will get negative displacement. Uh, by the way, while we're there, what do you think the slope is? What's the slope of the beam there? Is that positive slope or negative slope? Negative. So that means we better get negative shear on this side. 
let's see if that happens. Uh, before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and make this calculation. So I'm now going to say that the displacement at B is negative uh, 14,062.5, and that's kip feet cubed. And I've got a little bit of math to do here. So first I'm going to divide it by E, which is 30,000, and that's kips per inch squared, and then divided by 800 inches to the fourth, and then I'm going to do the conversion that there are 12 cubed, or 1,728 cubic inches in a cubic foot. If you look carefully, the force units cancel, these cancel, and I'm left with inches to the fifth in the numerator and inches to the fourth in the denominator, so that should just give me inches. And what's that numerical value? Anybody calculate that for me real quick? I'm guessing it's one. I don't know why. One point oh one. That's pretty close to one. I may have worked this problem just a few too many times in the past. Okay. So about one inch maximum displacement at the end. So how can I find the slope? Well, all I have to do is sum forces in the y direction. In this case, I have the shear force at B acting down. And my applied load of 562.5 also is acting down. So what is the shear at B? Well, the shear at B is negative. 562.5 kip feet squared divided by EI. Remember, shear in the conjugate beam is slope in the real beam. So we have a negative slope, and that matches what we saw before. Now, what's the actual numerical value? So I start off with negative. 562.5 and that's kip feet squared and now I got to divide by EI and do some unit conversions. So again divided by E that's 30,000 kips per inch squared my line disappeared there divided by I 800 inches to the fourth but now I need to get rid of feet squared. So that means there's inches squared. So there's 12 squared or 144 square inches in a square foot. And if you look at this carefully, you'll notice kips cancel kips. Feet squared cancel feet squared. Inches to the fourth, inches to the fourth. So I have no unit. I think this is going to be a terribly small number. Anybody know what it is? 0 0.03. Anybody else get that? Two zeros? Yeah. You got that? Yeah. Okay. So zero, zero, 003, and that will be radians. It's a pretty small angle. What do you think about that? So far, it's kind of like all your skills rolled into one. You had to uh, find some reactions, draw a shear moment diagram, apply the new skill of developing the conjugate beam with the load applied, then go back and find shear moment at a point, and then relate that to displacement and rotation.
Okay.